Sometimes just searching your data isn't enough. You may need to create and output a report periodically. For this, we have the reporting feature. In here you'll find some reports we've pre-assembled for you. These are very basic reports and may not be of much value to you, but they can get you started on what the reporting feature can do. When you're ready to take a deeper dive into creating a custom report, click on the reports icon from the dashboard. When you get to the reports page you see several reports we already built for you. They are in blue at the top of the page. Clicking on any of these reports generates data from whatever you have in your database, or nothing if you haven't inputted any records yet that meet criteria. But to build a custom report, scroll down the page and look for the drop-downs where you can assign columns of data to your report. After you add columns of data you can then optionally sort that data, or filter that data. Let's add just a few columns of data for a quick example. Don't assign any sorting or filtering yet, let's keep it simple for now. After you've added your columns, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and give your report a name. And then click on the Save and Run button. Any data in your database will be displayed, showing only the columns you selected, and in random order. Click on the Return menu to get back to the Reports page. Now you'll see that the report you just created is in the drop-down so you can re-run it at any time. Click on the button to edit the report so we can dig further into what we can do next. Notice that before all the data came out in random order. You can fix that by adding sort values to your report. Be careful not to assign the same sort value to more than one column. For example, don't add the sort value of one to two different columns, or you'll get an error. Here you can see my sample sort orders. Scroll down to the bottom of the page again and save and run the report. You can see that the report now is sorted the way I selected. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. This time let's add a conditional filter. I'm going to tell the report that I only want records that contain the word Burke in the last name of the interred. This doesn't mean that the last name has to be exactly this filter, it just means that the last name should contain the letters that make up the word Burke somewhere in the last name. If I wanted only names that exactly match the filter I input then I would use the equal sign for the condition, but in this case I only want to scan the last names for partial matches. Scroll down the page and click on the Save and Run button. The output now shows any name that contains the filter that I assigned. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. Let's say I want to filter my results by a date range. To accomplish this I would need to add the data field in twice, so I can assign two different conditions. So if I wanted, for example, all records with a date of interment in the year 2007, I would add one filter for date of interment that is greater than, or equal to, January 1, 2007. And then I would add another date of interment data column with a filter less than, or equal to, December 31, 2007. You should not assign any sort orders to any secondary filter columns. The second data column of the same name will not appear on the report, it will only be used for filtering purposes. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and save and run the report. The report now only shows records with a date of interment in the year of 2007. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. We can add more filters to this report. For example, if you wanted only records with a purchaser assigned, you could add a condition of greater than, and then leave the filter empty. By doing this, you're saying that you only want any record that has a value in this data column. Scroll down and click on the save and run button again. Now your results are only showing you records with a date of interment in 2007 and only records that have a purchaser assigned. It's important to note that all conditions are inclusive. So in this case, the report is looking for any record with a date of interment in 2007, and, any record with a purchaser assigned. Both filters must be applied, and only data that matches both filters will be returned. You cannot make an exclusive set of filters with this reporting feature. For example, you cannot create a report that returns all date of interments in 2007, or, all purchasers with a valid value assigned. For that, you would have to get creative by exporting to Excel, which is discussed later in this video. Click on the Return menu to get back to the Reports page, and click on the Edit Report button again. Let's say I wanted a report that shows me all the date of interments in 2007, 
and only records where the purchaser is not yet assigned. I would put a condition of equal to in the drop down of the purchaser last name and then leave the filter empty. By doing this I'm telling the report that if any value exists for the purchaser, to exclude it from the report. The results now show any record with a date of interment greater than, or equal to, January 1, 2007, and, any record with a date of interment less than, or equal to, December 31, 2007, and, any record that is missing a purchaser last name. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. Clear out all the filters you made previously, and let's try something else. Put in a condition of, starts with, next to the interred's last name, and then put in a filter of the letter, B. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the save and run button. Now your results only show you records with names of interred that start with the letter, B. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. You could also look for data values that end with a specific letter, or letters. Change the filter to, ends with, and then put in a filter value of, Y. Your results only display any record meeting the criteria. In this case, any last name of the interred that ends in the letter, Y. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. There is also a condition for, doesn't contain. Using this filter, you put in a filter value of one or more letters, and the results will display records that do not match this criteria. Alternatively, you could use the condition, contains. And using the same filter of, and, we could run the report. This would give us any record where the first name of the interred has the letters, and, anywhere in the first name. Click on the return menu to get back to the reports page, and click on the edit report button again. Clear out all the conditions and filters, and then scroll down to click on the save and run button. This will give you all data for the columns you specified, unfiltered. Click on the button at the top of the results so you can export to Excel. Unfortunately, you may run into a few pop-up boxes along the way, and these are what you might see. If it gives you the message that the file format and extension don't match, just click on the yes button. When the report loads in Excel, you may see a message that the report is in protected view. This is very common and nothing to worry about. Just click on the button to enable editing. Lastly, you might see a box that says, problems during load. This is also common and it happens because it's trying to convert a web page into a spreadsheet. Just click on the OK button. Now that you have the report open in Excel, you can apply data filters. Move your cursor to the first row after the blue header row. Then click on the data menu, and then click on the filter icon. From here you can do all sorts of filtering by checking, and unchecking, different boxes and changing the text filter criteria. Click on the OK button when you're done setting filters, and your results will be instantly changed. Excel doesn't remove records when it filters, it just hides rows. You can always return those rows by removing the filters. If you find that the formatting of the report after you export to Excel isn't working out for you, you may need to export to a tab delimited text file instead. This will give you raw, unformatted, data so that you can better manage your data filters. After you've saved your tab delimited file, open Excel. Then click on the icon for, open. Then click on the option to, browse. Your file is most likely stored in your downloads folder. Be sure to change the filters above the open button to look for all files, not just Excel files, so that you can see the text file you created. Then open that file. Be sure that the option is selected for delimited. Then click on the next button. Be sure that the delimiter checkbox is only selected for tab. Then click on the next button. You could leave all the columns set to general and click on finish at this point. But if you find that some data isn't formatting the way you want it, you can select individual columns in the data preview and then assign column data format to text, date, or general, as needed. Now all your raw data is in the spreadsheet. You'll just need to resize the columns so everything fits. Move your cell position to A2 and then click on the data menu and then the filter icon. From there you can use the drop downs of any column to set the filters you need for your report. That should be plenty to get you going with creating your own custom reports for now. But if you still have questions just contact us.